Welcome back to another edition of Know the Foe. I'm Andrew Hutchinson, the managing editor of Hogbeat.com, your Arkansas site in the Rivals Network. Fresh off an open date, the Hogs are back in Fayetteville this week, and they're hosting Mississippi State. Both teams are sitting at 5-3 and three and receiving votes in the AP poll, so it should be a pretty good game. Uh, with that, it's time to once again go behind enemy lines for some insider perspective on this upcoming game. Uh, Theo DeRosa covers the Bulldogs for commercial, the Commercial Dispatch in Mississippi, and he was kind enough to give us some time today. Theo, we appreciate it. How are you? Doing well, Andrew. How are you? Doing all right. It's uh, November, starting to feel like football weather. Uh, so we'll start off kind of with a broad question. You know, how, how would you characterize this Mississippi State season up to this point? Well, it's funny because if you go through the first four games, you'd probably say it's a disappointing season. You get that win over NC State. They barely beat La Tech. They lost to Memphis. They lost to LSU. But since then, they've looked really good. They beat Texas A&M on the road. They just beat Kentucky pretty handily at home. Those two ranked wins are really, I mean, they're right behind Arkansas outside the top 25. So right now it's been a pretty good season for Mississippi State. They're basically guaranteed a bowl game because they had a game with Tennessee State in a couple weeks. And they could get up to nine wins if they win all four games. Now that's going to be a challenge. Arkansas, Auburn, Ole Miss still on the schedule. But yeah, it's been a good year. And everyone knows about Mike Leach and that air raid offense. We, we kind of got a taste of it last year uh, with his first season. And I'm curious if it maybe looks a little bit different or maybe is it, it, does it, do they feel like it's running more smoothly now that it's year two in the system? They do. Last year, KJ Costello had that great game against LSU, something like 600 passing yards, and they won that game in Baton Rouge. But after that, he really struggled, and true freshman Will Rogers replaced him mid-year. Now Rogers is the established starter. He won SEC Co-Offensive Player of the Week last week, going 36 for 39, setting an SEC completion percentage record. He's been executing this offense well, and the receivers have improved. You guys, uh, you, they have guys with more experience. They have a couple freshmen coming on. So two really good running backs and Woody Marks and Dylan Johnson. Yeah, overall, the air raid really has improved. Last year, it was a real struggle at times. They scored zero offensive points against Kentucky, shut out at Alabama, and you didn't see anything like that, though you still saw some struggles this year. And you kind of mentioned Will Rogers right there. I was going to ask you specifically about him. You know, he leads the country in completion percentage. I think he's third in passing yards. It seems statistically that he's your typical Mike Leach quarterback. Uh, would you agree with that? And, and what have you made of his season so far and how he's kind of developed, you know, now in his, his second year uh, there at Mississippi State? Yeah, and this probably goes along with the improvement that the whole team has made. But early on, I mean, his average depth of target was pretty low, yards per attempt pretty low, and he wasn't really executing some of the high percent or some of the low percentage throws, some of the harder throws in this offense. But in games like AM and Kentucky, he has done that. And I think that's what helped them beat those teams, being able to go deep down the field like he hadn't done in the first few weeks. And he's really improved. Uh, definitely, obviously, even before that was good at completing the short throws that they like so much in this offense. But the fact that he can at least try a vertical game, I think that's opened up things a lot. And you kind of mentioned a couple of these guys uh, earlier, but who are some of the top playmakers outside of Rodgers that Arkansas should be aware of? And, and what are their kind of strengths? What do they bring to the offense? So Makai Polk is the team's top receiver. He's a transfer from California and he's been, yeah, their best receiver this year. He, I think is top 10 in the nation in catches. He's just got, he runs good routes. He catches the ball and he's just a reliable guy on the outside. Jaden Wally is an explosive uh, inside receiver in his sophomore season. He set the school freshman record for receiving yards last year. Hasn't really topped that, but he's definitely capable of making plays. Had, I think, 95 yards against Kentucky. And I mentioned Marks and Johnson. Marks is probably the number one, but it's really more of a 1A and 1B at running back. What both of them can do really well is they can catch really well. Marks has at least one reception in all 19 games that he's played. And he's also in like the top 20 in receptions nationwide. So, I mean, that's going to happen when you throw the ball 54 times a game, but they have two really good backs and a few good receivers. And looking at the statistics, and I'm not sure if there's a, a great answer to this, but I noticed that Mississippi State, I believe, is like 61st, 61st nationally in scoring defense, uh, giving up a little over 24 points a game but their 17th uh, top 20 defense and total defense allowing about 313 yards per game. 
what would you attribute that to? What, what do you think is kind of the disconnect there? I mean, is there special teams mixed in there or, or what do you think? Yeah, I think special teams is involved. They had a punt return touchdown given up against Memphis, the one that had a controversial call attached, and they had one against Kentucky too. So that did account for a lot of that disconnect. I, I'd noticed that too with the disconnect between total yards, total defense, and scoring defense. A lot of it is, I mean, they've been really good at the run game. They give up some big plays sometimes. So it's not like these long drives every time. They have been prone to a few interceptions, especially lately with Rodgers. I don't know if that's just a byproduct of him trying harder throws now, but he has thrown more, setting up teams with short fields. May not get many yards, but they will get some points out of it. It is interesting to see that gap. And I think sometimes, yeah, the total yards don't tell the story, but they probably tell a better story than the scoring stats right now. And Sam Pittman has talked about this week the the challenge of facing the Bulldogs defense is that, you know, all their movement and the blitzes that they bring to the table saying uh, that it's it's really vital to stay out of third and long situations. Uh, Would you agree with that assessment? And and what's kind of your scouting report on that side of the ball? Yeah, I would agree because Mississippi State is one of the best teams against third down because they don't face it very much either because their defense is – sorry, they face it a lot because – their defense is so good on first and second down. But, yeah, their D-line lost defensive end Jordan Davis before the season started. But the guys that have stepped up have kind of replaced his production. Tyrus Weed, who Pittman mentioned, is a really athletic, dynamic player. He can uh, go up front. He can play back. And Jet Johnson, Nathaniel Watson on the linebackers. You got Cameron Young and Jaden Crumity on the line. It is a good defense. The secondary has cornerbacks Martin Emerson, who was – he missed basically all of last week's game because of targeting. He was called for it like five plays into the game and they didn't really miss a beat. I mean, you have Emmanuel Forbes on the other side. You have some good safeties. It's a good defense. It's definitely susceptible to big plays, like I said, but overall, like you said, I mean, good at total yards and pretty stout defense that held what, NC State to 10 points, AM 22, Kentucky 17, and again, seven of those were punt return. And you kind of touched on it a little bit there, but I'm curious if you're if you were an offensive coordinator and you were going up against Mississippi State's defense, how would you try to attack it? I mean, you said they're susceptible to big plays. I mean, is that deep passes down the field, or or what what would you say? What what would you try to do to to exploit that defense? That's a good question, and I think what I would probably do what Alabama did. Not that all of us can be Alabama, but it did work. And uh, what they did was whenever Mississippi State blitzed, they got rid of the ball quickly and they got big plays out of it mostly through the air. I think they had three touchdowns of like 40 or more yards. So you got to get the ball out quickly and you got to do it. So you got to go away from a guy like Emerson, try to beat the safeties over the top or something like that. And I think you can run effectively. It, you just have to go outside because their guys on the inside are really tough, but that's a good question. And it hasn't been easy for most teams clearly, but there is a way to do it. And it could see, you could see Arkansas exploiting some, of the weaknesses that they have. And this is a little bit off topic and maybe something that people outside of journalism, people like us care about, but I've got to ask, you know, this is your first year you said cover Mississippi state. What's it like covering Mike Leach on a daily basis? It's tough. It's definitely different. I mean, you don't get injury updates. He like Jordan Davis, we saw him get injured in a false scrimmage. We've never been told exactly what happened, except other reports have come out that he tore his ACL, which I'm inclined to believe given social media posts, but we cannot confirm that. So yeah, it's not easy. I mean, you know, it's Leach. He's been combative with questions. I asked him a couple of weeks ago after the Alabama game, and I deserve this. I asked him how much, how important it was that they settled for a field goal when they could have got a touchdown. And Leach said, I'm not a math guy, but about four points. I was like, yeah, okay, that <laughs> that's track. But yeah, it's not always easy, but it can be entertaining. Like, when my friend brought candy coin to the press conference and we just talked about it for five minutes. So it's a roller coaster for sure. And finally, I'll wrap it up with this, you know, Arkansas, I think opened as a, I want to say a five point favorite, depending on where you looked at, uh, you don't necessarily have to give a score prediction here if you don't want to, but how do you kind of see this game playing out and, and what do you think are the keys to the game for, for either side? I think the key for Arkansas is to get some big plays against the defense. I mean, I can't mention that enough. That's how teams have beaten Mississippi State. That's how LSU did it. That's how Alabama did it. And if you can force Rodgers into some turnovers, get some turnover luck just anywhere you can find it, win on special teams, I think that's how Arkansas wins this game. 
Mississippi State, I mean, if you can go 36 for 39 passing and run the ball for almost 100 yards like they did last week, probably going to have some success. As far as a score prediction, these two teams are remarkably even to me, and I think Arkansas being at home, I'll give them an edge of a few points. You said it might be a high-scoring game. Mississippi State hasn't played that many of them, so I'd probably go something like 30 to 27 Arkansas. Well, that's all I have for you today, Lee, uh, Theo. Uh, you know, thanks again for for giving us some insight on the Bulldogs. And as a reminder to everyone listening, kickoff is scheduled uh, for 3 p.m. Uh, the game will be televised on the SEC Network. I know everyone's excited here at Arkansas to not have another 11 a.m. game. Uh, and then also, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that way you can always see these Know the Foe interviews as well as press conferences, practice clips, uh, recruiting videos, and much, much more. And as always, be sure to check out hogbeat.com for all of our coverage of everything Arkansas.